Stop! Collaborate and listen! <laughs> Those soapbox are a great way to bring um, coding into your K-5 through classroom. I'm super excited to incorporate them into a middle school math classroom. And I'm excited for the cross-curricular aspect of it with these guys. And are you really excited about Ozobot Classroom? Yes! <laughs> so today, here at ISTE, we found out that in the fall, Ozobot's going to be launching Ozobot Classroom, which in our district is something we're super excited for. It's going to integrate with Google, um, so we look forward to that. Previously, though, a lot of things to, that we wanted our teachers to do as far as tracking student progress, we would use code.org with Ozobot. So now that Ozobot's rolling something out like this, it gives our teachers the opportunity to track the student's progress while using Ozobots all within one platform that syncs with Google um, Classroom as well. So we're really looking forward to this coming out this fall. Okay, so what I'm most excited about, about Ozobot Classroom, is the ability to allow our students to guide themselves through the activities. We can watch their progress. We can step in and offer assistance when it's needed. It's just going to give us a lot of power as teachers to be able to help our students in a lot of different ways. Hey everyone, I'm Tara and I am coming to you live from the ISTE conference in Philadelphia. You may have been tuning in to our previous videos and saw some interviews that we've been doing with certified educators, but this is the moment you've all been waiting for, the unveiling of Ozobot Classroom. So here at our Ozobot Dome, we've been talking to educators and going through our mini bot camp experience. We have been introducing them to the two different ways to code, which is our color codes in Ozoblockly, and we've been going through two quick activities to show educators how they're able to take these color codes and also blockly and introduce them into their classroom with their students. Now, we've also taken those two activities and showed you how you can use Ozobot Classroom. So Ozobot Classroom allows you to get three key benefits, student-teacher communication, a recommendation engine, and real-time insights into connected and screen-free coursework. So here's a little sneak peek of what Ozobot Classroom looks like you'll see there's a comprehensive overview of each one of the students in your class. You can click on a student and you can see which lessons they've already completed, which are pending, and you can assign new lessons to the students. You can also take a deeper dive into each student and see their individual achievements and engagements, and from there, define personalized learning needs. So if a student is falling behind in a particular subject or a lesson, you're able to monitor that and then really help that student catch up with the rest of the class. So to give you a little more idea of how Ozobot Classroom works, I'm going to take you over to one of our engineers that's been working on Ozobot Classroom. Room. Her name's Teresa and she is back here. Hey Teresa, how are you doing? Good sir, how are you? Good. So you've been talking to all the educators at the conference and kind of going through Ozbot Classroom with them. Can you give us an example of how teachers can get real-time insights from Evo? Yeah, for sure. We'll do a really quick activity right now. So we'll get our Evo ready. We're going to start training. So this is an example from, oops, sorry. This is an example from the teacher training that's in our classroom right now. So when you get started, you'll do the same training. So we'll turn on Evo, and then we'll connect. And then we're going to connect our Ozobot Evo to the Chrome browser, and now we can get data back and forth. And this is a challenge that says that Evo should walk on a black line and see the different color codes. And I just have a quick sample right here. So as soon as Evo sees those color codes, this next button will be enabled. So we'll set Evo on this line, and as soon as it saw that fast code, then this button was enabled. So now we're allowed to move on, and then you can imagine how when students are doing a lesson or you're doing an activity, that's how everyone will progress through each step. All right, and then about Oso Blockly, so this will open up the editor, which you've already seen, but when you're logged into classroom and you're connected to your bot, you'll be able to send programs to Evo and then get, um, you'll be able to see how students are doing and their progress throughout their activity. So that is a very super quick activity where Evo saw one color code while we were talking and then we looked at Ozo Blockly for 17 seconds. 
Now, we have been talking to a lot of educators at the conference. There's been a line around the booth the entire time. What's some feedback that you've heard about Ozbot Classroom? People have been super excited. And actually, the most common reaction has been like silence and then wow, like I really need this. This is going to help so much. And that's been really cool to hear. I'm really excited for Ozobot Classroom to come out. I know you are, and we hope that you are too. So if you've missed any of the uh, interviews that we've been doing with the certified educators earlier in the conference, you can go ahead and check those out right now. Hi, I'm Jenna with Ozobot. Thanks for joining us today. This is Stephanie. And um, Stephanie, can you tell us what subjects and grades you teach? Awesome. So I teach computer science to third, fourth, and fifth grade gifted and talented students. How long have you been using Ozobot in your classroom? This is going into my fourth year of using Ozobot in my classroom. Lisa, can you tell us what your favorite thing is about using Ozobot? Um, I love that they are so hands-on. My students are always super engaged when I use Ozobot in my lessons. Um, I also like that I can differentiate with them. So I can use the color code with um, my students that still need that. And then I can also use Ozo Blockly for my students that are ready for that. So I like that I can differentiate with them. And I just love that they're so engaging. Nice. Well, I see that you brought some lesson plans with you today. Would you mind sharing some of those? I did. So I'm going to be sharing about an engineering lesson that I do with my students. Um, so I call it Engineering Ozobot Mazes. And um, it is a lesson that involves engineering and then it involves computer science and math. Um, so it involves a lot of um, core subject areas. Um, the first thing I do with my students is I give them an Ozobot planning sheet and I give them a 10 by 10 poster square. So on the planning sheet, they're able to um, kind of sketch out um, where they want their materials to go on their maze. And some of our favorite materials that we use are cardboard strips, um, straws, um, water bottles. Um, they like to cut those up and kind of make tunnels um, for the Ozobot to go through. And after they plan out their maze, um, they're able to start building it. So it really goes through the design thinking where they have to come up with a plan first um, to sketch it out and then to actually um, engineer and, and make it. Um, so they make their mazes. And um, I love that because they're able to really be um, super creative. Um, so I've had some different themed ones. So they've done, um, I had a student do like a firehouse one. I've had a student do like a haunted house type theme. Um, and then we get on to the programming side of it. And so the one thing that I really like is that um, the kids can incorporate the markers with Ozoblockly. So there's a part where you can program it to um, go along the black line and then um, my kids will then program it um, by measuring in millimeters um, to see what the distance is that it needs to travel and of course they also use angles um, to see how it needs to turn. Um, I also love this lesson because it's it really allows my kids to be able to go back and debug so when there's a problem with their code with their program um, they're able to kind of go back through their code and try to see where their, their error was, where their mistake was. So it's a really great way for them to kind of debug um, through their code. Um, so I really like that as well. And then I also have a rubric um, that I've created that is a really great way for you to kind of assess your students um, to make sure that they were able to get to those outcomes that you wanted. So the outcomes of being able to program it successfully, um, to be able to go through that engineering design process. So I love that the rubric is there to kind of, so that you can assess your students and um, make sure that um, they were successful. Um, so awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about how your students responded to these? Um, this is actually one of their favorite activities in my classroom. They're always really excited. Um, when I pull out all the supplies um, to get started for this um, this lesson and this activity. Um, I've also had really good feedback from parents um, saying that they loved that their um, child was able to be creative and also kind of show that persistence where they've had to, you know, kind of debug and go back and look at their program. Um, so it really builds that persistence as well. So it's a very popular lesson. <laughs> awesome. And any advice out there for the teachers? Yes. I would say to definitely take advantage and dive into the Ozobot library, lesson library. Um, there are some really great lessons in there and I love that you can take a lesson that's in there and kind of modify it to your classroom's um, unique needs. 
Um, so one thing that I did recently is I did a code camp last week for middle school girls. And so I pulled out the um, Ozobot lesson that uses Pokemon Go. Um, but since I did girls, I changed it to where it was um, emoji themed. And so they had to collect the emojis in order um, by programming the Ozobot through Ozoblockly um, to go in a specific order. And so I love that you can take the lessons and modify them to your specific classroom needs. So definitely take advantage and use the lesson library. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie, for joining us today. And everybody out there on Facebook Live, thanks for joining us. Bye. Howdy, my name is Anthony. We're here at ISTE, and I have Gina here. She's a certified, OZBOT certified educator. Um, can you tell us what grade levels and what subject you teach? Sure. So I teach 10th grade English at Montour High School. It's a, about 15 minutes outside of Pittsburgh. Very cool. And how long have you been teaching OZBOT? I've been using these in my English classroom for three years. Three years. Awesome. And what's your favorite thing you've done with OZBOT so far? My favorite part about these Ozobots are the diversity that it gives me in my classroom. Um, it allows me to use many different things, um, many different techniques. I can bring mm -hmm. STEAM into the language arts classroom. Awesome. Um, and I can model it and make it work for different students in my classroom. Very cool. And then I see you brought your laptop here. Can you tell me a little bit more about your lesson? I believe it's on the lesson library. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah, yeah. it is. So awesome. I have. Um, it's a 10th grade English literature classroom, and what I do, I have them start with a creative piece. So they choose between either a murder mystery or a fairy tale. Um, this year, the students chose to do a murder mystery. Overwhelmingly, it looks like. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that was 76% um, wanted the murder mystery, and that's what they're going to use to create their storyboard and all of the writing pieces that will filter into this. Awesome. So just to get them started, I have them do some brainstorming. Um, I give them the robots and the markers and the coding and I kind of let them explore. So I don't tell them how the Ozobots work. Mm -hmm. That's part of the problem solving that's worked into the overall lesson. So they have to figure out how they work first and then they can go ahead and start building their stories. Very so cool. once they get through the critical thinking and the problem solving of the actual mechanics of the Ozobot and how it works, then they can start with their project. So once they get to the piece where they are ready to write, they're going to come up with their creative story. That creative mm -hmm. story has to hit all of the elements of literature that we cover. So it has to have a sound plot, uh, there has to be a protagonist, antagonist, conflict, um, cause and effect, some resolution in there. Um, and that piece of fiction is what then they use to create their storyboard. Awesome. And then how big are the groups? That you're doing this so with? they work in groups of, four, groups of four and they're in the same team throughout the whole project so this project awesome. takes about three and a half weeks to do start to finish um, once they have their story done they can start creating their storyboard and that's mm -hmm. what some of these are here um, you'll see they kind of had their rough draft and then yeah. their sketch their storyboard has <clears throat> to match the setting of their story so wherever they describe their story to take place their board has to match that from that point on I bring in the Ozobots and they have to code the Ozobot to follow the main character within their story. So awesome. as they're presenting their story and as they're sharing, that Ozobot will actually move on the board to mm -hmm. match what they're reading and what they're sharing. So that's where the STEM piece comes into play uh, with the coding. And what I'm able to accomplish with this are three different types of writing. So they have their creative writing. Mm -hmm. um, they do their storyboards, they have their coding, and then I bring a technical piece of writing into it where they are going to write about the process of coding. Awesome. So that's the piece that kind of takes this creative to the next level um, and allows them to use some collaboration to work through that. And that usually entails like talking about how the color codes work and like debugging and stuff like that? Or yeah, so their technical it? piece actually replaced my old how-to informative mm. writing piece. Um, so instead of them telling me how to get somewhere, or how to do something, they're now writing and explaining how they accomplish the coding within awesome. their storyboard. So they know that they have a start and an end point. They know that that Ozobot has to follow that main character the whole way through. Mm -hmm. And once it's finished and they present their story, then they have to tell me how they did that coding in writing. Gotcha. So once they go through and create their boards, Um, they do work through their codes, and they had some troubleshooting on the side there to mm -hmm. figure out where it needed to go. Looks like so and much fun. Is, yeah, mm -hmm. so they really do enjoy this. Um, they like working together. 
but I think also they like all the different pieces. So if they're an artist, they can kind of pull their artistic ability into this. If they're more inclined with the STEM and the technology, they have that aspect of it too. It encompasses so many different aspects. Yeah, so they actually end up teaming themselves and finding out who is the expert where, and that's kind of what makes these great at the end because they have all these pieces together. So this is an example of one of the final presentations. Um, they have their finished storyboard there. Mm -hmm. And they so are- airplane? That's an airplane, yeah. And they their murder mystery went through, that was their setting. So their storyboard matched their setting. And then as they're sharing their story and they're presenting to the class, that Ozobot is following the main character through their storyboard. Awesome. Yeah, so they have um, they have a good time with this. It was interesting to watch them figure out the timing of it. So if they're reading too quickly with the coding, yeah. they kind of have to figure out. To slow down. Yeah, but what's nice yeah. about that is you're hitting all of those skills. So they're collaborating, they're you know using critical thinking, problem solving to figure that out. Presenting. They're doing the presentations, um, and really, they just have to work together because if they don't, they'll never accomplish the three pieces that are. I think you remember uh, you were telling me before we started recording that the timing just to start right off, they always had like, wait, 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 I'm not ready yet. Okay, let's go. Yeah, so they practice. Just even that initial. Yeah, they would practice these before they did the presentation with the class, yeah. and they would get up there, and I think the nerves kind of got to them a little sure. bit. Um, so they would set the Ozobot down and start reading, and it would be, wait, wait, no, I have to go back. No, I'm not ready. No, I'm not ready. Uh, but they finally got it down. And this one here was actually one of the most intricate ones that we had. I think there were about 27 codes on there. Mm -hmm. um, and that, <clears throat> their programming was unbelievable. They were able to follow that character through all 27 codes. And it matched their story to a T. That's all. Awesome. Um, I wonder how much time they had to practice. For that. Like, it looks like there's like every inch, two inches, there's another color code. Yeah, and it did. It matched the plot exactly as they mm -hmm. went through this. Um, and I actually had them do this again a second time because I wanted to see if they were able to replicate that, and they did. So, That's awesome. yeah, the time and the practice that went into this one, um, this was probably one of the, the best ones that I had. But to see them go through that code and figure mm -hmm. out all of those pieces to make it match the story, which is what was cool. Um, the last writing piece to this, as they go through, so yeah, there's the final board. Mm -hmm. um, so they have their creative piece and then they have their technical writing about the how-to coding. Um, and then the third writing piece that I pull into that is a reflection. So that reflection is theirs on the project overall. So it can be about the coding, it could be about working together, it mm -hmm. could be about the process. Anything that related to the project, they can talk about in that reflection. So within these three and a half weeks I'm able to hit the creative writing mm -hmm. all of my plot elements we do a technical writing piece and then we also have the reflection and actually even with in here they do a little bit of research too when they're trying oh, yeah, to figure sure. out how these work in the beginning so even though the research isn't a formal goal within this project they're still working on that as they go um, and then lastly what we do once they have their presentation done this is actually a picture of my sophomore kids at the elementary school were on the same campus mm -hmm. so we were able to go down and my sophomores taught the third graders how to use these ozobots so they brought their storyboards down and we spent two weeks working with them and they actually created the same project but on a smaller scale well, that's awesome did yeah. uh did you reach out to the younger class or how did that the third grade teacher the... actually reached out to me Awesome. Um, and she saw that we were using them and she wanted to know if it would be applicable in her classroom. Yeah. So we kind of talked about it and knew it had to be on a smaller scale. Sure. Um, but then as we were talking, we came up with the idea to have my kids teach her kids. So it kind of added that peer to peer piece yeah, that took awesome. us out of it, um, which was okay. But they had a lot of fun doing this. So they brought their storyboards down to show them as a model. Mm -hmm. And then they actually put together a classroom lesson and they taught the third graders how the Ozobots worked. So they taught them nice. the coding process, they taught them the color coding, yeah. um, what you have to do with the markers, you know, how specific you have to be, and they were able to work with them to get that accomplished. So the final project with that, they did, the third grade class had one final story, and they and did that's theirs. that's all one story? That's all one story. So they had theirs in pieces. Mm -hmm. um, they took the skill level down, obviously, sure. where my group of four, they had a bunch of skills in one. Mm -hmm. They split them up amongst different groups down there and then kind of jigsawed them together. But what they were able to do is they were essentially able to do the same thing we did at the high school, but on their level. 
And then once they created their storyboards, they came up to the high school and they shared those. And this is a picture of them sharing their storyboard. And their Ozobot went all the way through all six storyboards as well. So awesome. they practiced. And then did they present with it as well? Or so, more... yeah, so yeah. what we did with this, once the third grade came up, um, and they did their presentation, which they were super excited about. First of all, coming to the high school campus, they were stoked about. Oh, and yeah. Then, if I went to an upper grade class, I'd be excited. Yeah, they were super <laughs> excited about it. And then once it worked and they all shared their story, it was the best thing ever to them, which was awesome to see because my kids taught them. Yeah, I'm sure they, they were, were proud, too. Yeah, they were able to follow through with the lesson. And then there was that dialogue between. So we actually had a nice discussion after. Um, with my sophomore kids as far as what they learned. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had, you know, some of those other skills that you don't think about. Like they had to worry about patience. You know, they had to be patient with them and oh, some, yeah. you know, working through some of the little kinks that they took for granted that they already knew. Mm -hmm. um, but this was a nice collaborative project overall at the end. So I'm glad we were able to do that final presentation of both pieces. And it's cool That's to awesome. see the literature on two different levels. Definitely. Just a whole ton of parts to this you started off with your 10th graders where you had this storyboarding and all the other aspects mm -hmm. and then three technical or sorry three different writing aspects with the technical piece mm -hmm. and then bring it to the younger grades that's so much thought went into this that's awesome yeah thank you no it was um you know when i wanted to incorporate them into my classroom i had to make them relevant to what we were doing yeah and writing is a big part of what we do in that literature classroom yeah, so to me it made sense to tie it to writing as much as i could um, and one just kept leading to the next and next thing you know I have all three writing pieces in there yeah. and it turned out to be an awesome unit. It takes about three and a half weeks mm -hmm. um, but the goals that I hit and the standards that I reached throughout that three and a half weeks are well worth it. Oh definitely. That's awesome. I appreciate you taking the time to show us this. Um, do you have any advice for any OSBOT educators that might be their first time getting started or? Um, my advice would be be patient. patient. Yeah it's not <laughs> always going to work the way you want it to work, mm -hmm. um, especially if you let them dive into these and figure them out on their own. Yeah. Um, you kind of have to give them that space without telling them what to do or how it works. So if you have the patience to kind of set them free and let them figure it out, yeah. I think you'll be happy with the products. Awesome. Great. Thanks so much for your time again. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us live at the ISTE 2019 conference in Philadelphia. We have had so much fun. We hope you've had just as much fun as we have. Now, as you can see, there's a really long line outside of our booth, so I need to go get talking to some educators. But if you'd also like a one-on-one -on -one demo, make sure to sign up online at ozbot.com. And hopefully, we'll see you at the next conference.